When I talk about a community system, I talk about the system that is going to support the digital transformation of the industrial world. What the digital transformation refers to is a system that supports a process that you have not yet envisioned. Let me give an example. We funded a study at Carnegie Mellon, and one of the interesting things that I remember about the study is that first of all, about 50% of their electricity were in the plug loads. In other words, things people plug in the wall. And those are the things typically that get left on at night and don't get turned off, etc. So when they did their plug load monitoring, the reduction was about 20% of the bill. This is a building that was designed for low energy in the first place, but it saved them about 20%. They could look at their data, they'd find out what areas that the power was being consumed, and then they would discuss that with the people. They would show them how much power they were using by leaving their lights and heaters and everything on all night. Now let's move on. I don't know how many of you follow the weather, but in the West Coast, they used to forecast three, four, five days, and not very well. Today, they forecast seven days, and they're pretty good at it. But what's it mean to a building owner? A building is managed completely differently based on the weather. On a cold, humid day with the weather coming from the southeast is a different, totally different situation than on a warm, dry day with the weather coming from the north. And so if you look at the way buildings are managed for almost no additional cost, we're going to be able to put much more sophisticated systems in these buildings to make them run better. And that's the complexity with just an office building, which is basically a box with an air conditioner on top. Now consider that that box is not a box, it's an integrated mining complex. You have big mills, you have conveyors, you have mobile vehicles, you have data that change over time. You might have data from the government regulators, you might have data from the uh, manufacturers, you have data from the raw material suppliers, data that you send to your customers, and all that data form the same kind of a data challenge that the office building did that I described a few minutes ago. So when people start talking about big data, machine learning, these are no longer uh, scientific experiments. If you're looking at a, a big oil field, Almost every one of these wells, there's actually five pumps. There's four water pumps and an oil pump. Those things are 10 to 30,000 feet under the ground. So if one of them breaks, you bring a little portable derrick out and you pull the thing out to fix it. So it's a big deal, it's half a million dollars. Now it's a relatively straightforward task to get the data coming off of pumps. So they have to detect failure of these pumps they have not just the data coming off the pump, they have the previous three years, four years, five years of data that they can use to develop the conditions under which this thing is indicating the failure. So we're getting better and better at these things, just like the weather system went from five days out to seven days, we're getting to the point where we can identify failures before they happen, and we can do it accurately without the false positives. So the equipment is pretty much the same we had 10 years ago. The difference is the data.